Welcome to the Engineering and Public Works Roadshow, a joint effort by the American Council of Engineering Companies, the American Public Works Association, and the American Society of Civil Engineers, coming to you from the Great Trail State Conference in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, celebrating the Great Trail State of North Carolina. I'm very pleased to be joined by Brennan Fuquay. He is with the in, uh, Office of Integrated uh, uh, the Integrated Mobility Department with the North Carolina Department of Transportation. That's right. Yep, it's so a mouthful. Got, it's a mouthful. You did well. Yeah. But still, I mean, you know, it's, 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 a, it's an interesting thing because you guys are taking a look at how you bring everything together in the future of transportation for the state, right? So yeah, a, exactly. Um, um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about the department and kind of what you guys are working on right now. For sure. Uh, so... At NCDOT, our mission is to move people, connect them uh, to places, opportunities, services, all of that. And what IMD does specifically within the department um, is talk about how the different modes all interact. So yeah. we're trying to expand beyond just how people drive to places, but also how people in cars can interact with bicyclists mm -hmm. or, or um, pedestrians yeah. or you know, these days scooters or yeah, everything. everything else. It's yeah. really important that that we look at the safety of um, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. but also how we educate people on how to expect those interactions to happen. And, and it's only getting more technical and complex with the amount yeah. of technology that's rolling out. I, you know, one of the things that um, is a challenge, of course, is uh, the abundance of EVs out there, mm -hmm. and it's a question of having that infrastructure to actually support EVs. I know that that's something that the secretary has talked about, and, and a broader issue of how that impacts gas tax and funding and financing mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But what what is the what is the state's view on on the future of EVs and how it mixes in with the normal, you know, gas operated, you know, yeah, infrastructure? I mean, that's a great question, and it's one of the forthcoming or most important topics that we're yeah. looking at as we go in the future and and Secretary Hopkins has been um, extremely supportive of innovation of any type. Mm -hmm. um, we have the vision for vision zero and that means zero pedestrian, zero fatalities that have to do with vehicle travels mm -hmm. but it also talks about aiming for that zero uh, emissions with with uh, our carbon emissions on vehicles yeah. and things like that so I think it is um, I think it's understanding the technology, mm -hmm. uh, understanding that that technology is advancing quickly yeah. and seeing what we can do to be as prepared as possible for when these new technologies come, that they integrate seamlessly into our transportation network. Yeah, I know that Secretary Buttigieg was recently here. I know that he mm -hmm. was touring some of the technology uh, at uh, universities uh, yeah. you know, around state. Uh, yeah, North Carolina benefits from the fact that you have a lot of top rate um, universities with technology programs. Yeah. You also have a lot of investment from the tech sector coming in. How is the, the state leveraging that talent at the academic or, or private sector level to kind of go in with the planning on how, how, how technology is going to integrate with mobility? I mean, I think a lot of what we can do or the best thing that we can do is get the smartest people at the table, right? Yeah. And a lot of that comes from people who are doing the research at our universities. Like you said, we have so many incredible universities that are going on. We're doing autonomous vehicles at um, NCANT. We've got um, ITRI in, at NC State. We've got UNC uh, all doing research for us. So what we like to do is we, we kind of go and challenge these universities with uh, transportation things that we see coming up. And yeah. they've always stepped up to the table and it's been really important to find, continue to find research funding, continue mm -hmm. to partner with them uh, because they really are the ones that know what the next steps are. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's talk about, I guess, the event here, the conference, yeah. which is, you know, second is uh, this is the final day of the conference has been a great success. How important is it to have all the stakeholders come together in one place to be able to talk about um, really a central issue, which is that recreational infrastructure and, and, yeah. and really opening up the state's trails and greenways and, and improving and investing in them. Yeah, I, you know, I've repeated it several times to the folks that have put on this conference. One, it's incredible. Um, two, it's it's fun being NCDOT here because yeah. we're a little bit of a fish out of water when we're talking <laughs> about rec trails uh -huh. and natural yeah. surfaces and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it kind of goes back to the same partnership we're talking about with the universities. Get mm -hmm. the people who have the resources with the people who know how to do things together and yeah. it really makes sense. Whether you're traveling for 
recreation or if you're going to a job or anything like that, you yeah. are still moving through a transportation network. And, and the way Integrated Mobility Division mm -hmm. works and under Secretary uh, Hopkins' uh, leadership is we want to make sure everybody's safe no matter how they're moving. Yeah. And we want to make sure that people are seeing the benefits of things like recreational trails. We saw during the pandemic how important it was for mm -hmm. people to get outside and yeah. have these types of facilities there. Um, and, and you know, we at NCDOT have some of the resources on how to get things constructed or how mm -hmm. to find funding for uh, these types of opportunities. So when we get with trail builders and advocacy yeah. groups and all of that, it really creates a, a positive overall uh, experience. Yeah, it really, you know, the interesting thing talking to a lot of the engineers uh, who work on these projects, it really is that, that, that link um, allowing people to access different mobility options. It's yeah. a, you know, you might bike a trail, but then you take that to a, a stop where you might be able to pick up transit and get 100%. somewhere else. So it all does to your, you know, yeah. it does integrate, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's it, there is no, nothing should be siloed. Everything should be thought of as uh, how's everything fit into a, a whole. Yeah, yeah, you want a job with IMD? That's exactly <laughs> what we're doing. Is what is that next connection? Yeah, is uh, yeah. I mean, people have to be able to yeah. access, get access to trails. Yeah, they have to be able to once they're getting off of a trail, going into a town center with a coffee mm -hmm. shop. Yeah. All of this is really, it works together. And yeah. that's the, the exciting thing to hear from this and how much excitement and positivity everybody's had. Well, it's good. I mean, the energy is good and the, the attendance is great. So, yeah. uh, Brennan, thanks for spending some time with us this morning. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, good luck with the, uh, with the department and everything you guys are doing. Appreciate uh, it. North Carolina does seem to be a leader in this space, so it's great to be able to kind of spotlight that. We're, uh, we're doing our best, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit and, uh, and enjoying the conference so far. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, again, uh, this has been the Engineering and Public Works Roadshow coming to you from uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina at the Great Trail State Conference, and we will see you next time.